Hello to uh, Nymphia. How are you today? I am great. How are you, Reuben? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for to me uh, chat to you today. So, can you tell me how long have you been a single songwriter for? Oh, you know, I wrote my first song when I was five years old. So I, I, I've always wanted to be a singer songwriter. Um, and I found an old accordion in our family attic. And I was like, oh, what's this? And so I brought it and dragged it down the steps. It was this big, heavy thing and sat in my room and wrote a song. Actually, excuse me, I was six years old. I wrote a song called Goodbye, Darling. It was a country song. And I was really proud of myself. It's not a, such a good song, but that's the first song I ever wrote. So, and then I was writing songs in, even in um, mid, you know, when I was 13, 14, and then in high school, and then in college, my first degree was mechanical engineering, which is silly. Um, so while I was a mechanical engineering major, I was playing in bands and I was writing some songs then. And then I said, this is not what I should be doing. I went to music school, studied classical music, sang, became an opera singer. And while I was focusing on that, I didn't do a long, lot of writing for obvious reasons, because opera singing is a pretty massive undertaking. And so I did that for a long time. And then finally, uh, I, I felt like I'd kind of done all I wanted to do in the opera world. I sang at San Francisco Opera, New York City Opera with San Francisco Symphony. I sang a bunch of roles that I really loved, like The Witch and Hansel and Gretel, one of my favorites. And then I decided I really wanted to do what I always wanted to do since I was six years old, is be a singer-songwriter. So that's when I launched Nymphia and started writing the songs for the first album around 2014. So that was about nine years ago when I very first sat down to start creating my Nymphia music. So you got your own uh, studio there, but have you got, do you go elsewhere to like record like a proper studio? And that sounds a bit, a bit wrong, but um, to a proper studio? My studio is improper. Um, I do. It depends on what I'm doing. Like for the first album, which is Dream Dance, and here's the CD of Dream Dance. Um, I recorded everything here except for some drums that I, I outsourced. And then we mixed everything here. And on that album, I actually played all the instruments except for the bass and the drums and a couple of the piano parts that a, a friend of mine came over here and recorded. Uh, and I realized after I made that album moving forward, it was so much work to do everything myself. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't do that again. It was too much work. It took so long to make that album because of that. So after that album, my second album, I, I went to an outside studio and I went to a studio here in Petaluma called Room with a View Studios, a beautiful, beautiful place because I know the recording engineer who runs the studio and he has all this incredible vintage gear, you know, Neve preamps for the mics and Neumann microphones and just, it's a beautiful studio with great sound. And my second album, which was, is Naked Kate, uh, which is my all acoustic cover album of Kate Bush material, since she's my primary influence. I needed, I really wanted to have a beautiful acoustic sound because we were using acoustic guitars and our voice. So we, I really wanted you need good mics, you need a good signal, really well recorded. So that's why I went to Jamie's studio for this album and I recorded this one fully over at his studio. And I invited New Orleans musician Alex McMurray to come and collaborate with me because he's a phenomenal guitar player. I was just listening to this about two weeks ago and going, oh my gosh, I love this album. I love all my albums so much. And then for my latest album, What Have I Forgotten? I worked in this studio here, which is called Wuhuya Music Studios. And I also worked at Vives Music Studios with an incredible producer and musician named Francisco Vives, who is a keyboard player and also a really good drum programmer because he also was a drummer. So a lot of times, you know, keyboard players will often program drums too, but because he is and was a drummer, he understands drum parts and how to put them together. So uh, I worked on all the vocals and the basic tracks here. And then I would bring the song, which I've laid out in the timeline with the scratch vocals over to Fran's studio. And then he and I would start working on all the other parts at his place 
uh, bass parts, keyboard parts. Mm -hmm. Then any guitar parts, I came back, I worked, recorded here. The final vocals, I recorded here. The final bass tracks, I recorded here because I also work with a phenomenal bass player named Ray Schaefer, who does my mixing. And then we mixed it all here as well. So, you know, and I'm sure every musician is like that. It really depends on what is being called for, where you record things. On this album, What Have I Forgotten? I also had some phenomenal guest musicians from Ireland. Uh, Declan Masterson, who was the music director for Riverdance, played the Celtic flute on this album. He also has played on Van Morrison albums. He's a great musician, Irish. And another Irish musician named Morris Dixon, who played Boran drums and Celtic banjo on this album. So they recorded, obviously, their parts in Ireland at their studios, sent them all over here to be brought into my, my final product. So there, I always give these long-winded answers. I hope that's okay. <laughs> so can you tell me more about your debut album called Dream Dance? Yes, I'd be happy to. Dream Dance was really an album that I realized as I finished it up that it was helping me to process the death of my fiance, Keith Keller, who died in 2006 uh, rather unexpectedly and the loss of someone that you love so deeply really throws you into a deep, deep spiral of self-examination, examination about life, examination about your spiritual beliefs, and uh, dealing with your grief, all of these things at once. And it was such a powerful experience and really did transform my life. And there was a lot of gifts to be gleaned from that pain and Des desolation that I that I felt during his loss and that's what went into dream dance and dream dance is really and it ended up being kind of a heroine's journey moving through that um, the dream dance of life that we all are living in it's you know that's kind of the theme of this album is you're moving through all these stages of of understanding yourself similar to what have I forgotten to be quite honest with you um, but this one was going through your your joy of life and then the devastation and then dealing with that like the song wasteland is dealing with the devastation of that and then moving through the healing and then kind of coming out at the end the final song on this album is called spiral which is really about spiraling up to your next evolution so dream dance like i said was i laid in all the parts so i worked with a lot of loops to get grooves and drum loops and then I would lay in keyboard parts or guitar parts or vocal parts and I just built it from the ground up layering all these things in as I was writing I kind of for this album I wrote very much in the studio using a loop to inspire what I started hearing for the song and pieced it together and that's why it took a very long time I think it took like six years to put it put it together and I was learning as I was learning the studio, I was learning the equipment, I was learning how to create loops and structures and slicing and dicing the loops. It was a very labor intensive process. And as I mentioned in my email last week to my fans, uh, I almost didn't put it out. I was so full of anxiety and fear about exposing myself in this way. Because prior to this, I'd been singing opera and doing theater and doing roles where you can get, you can disappear into the role. Here I'm not disappearing. Here I'm saying, here I am. This is who I am. This is the music I make. And I was, I would wake up at night for the first like months before I released it, not able to sleep. And I'm sure we've all had that experience with anxiety and fear. And uh, as I said in my email last week, I had that little, my little inner voice that I've learned to pay attention to, my intuitive voice that is never wrong. And you, you gotta, you have to sort through all the noise and listen to that. And it said, there are people out here that need to hear this music and you need to put this out for them. And so I listened to that and I just thought, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. And I had to drop all this other stuff. And I'm so glad I did. And so are my fans. So that's Dream Dance. So, can you more about um, Naked Kate? Sure. Naked Kate is my second album. And after Dream Dance, I uh, literally had a vision 
I'm not exaggerating at all. It came to me in one complete, again, that little voice with a vision. And that said, why don't you record an album with all the, Nick, the Kate Bush material and strip it down so you can really hear what the songs are, make it all acoustic, call it Naked Kate, and make a white cover with just you and the guitar. And it was really like that clear, the instructions. And so I was like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you know, I just followed it. And once I announced that I was doing this, I'll never forget, I did a Facebook Live in the garden and I announced I was doing it and I played one of the songs. And then I thought, okay, now I have to make it happen. And it was an extraordinary experience because first thing I had to do was dive into her entire catalog, which I had. Hers, hers is the only catalog I think that I have every single one of her recordings and the only artist who I have all of her recordings. And I went and listened from start to finish, starting with Kick Inside, going all the way to, to her latest album and figuring out what songs would lend themselves well to a stripped down acoustic approach where you're focusing on the song rather than the production because she's a lot about production as well. And I selected the material. I tried to get at least one song from each album. And then I sat down to start workshopping them myself. I had to relearn the material. And I realized I needed a collaborator to really bring it alive acoustically with the guitar. And so I invited a phenomenal musician named Alex McMurray to come from New Orleans and re record this with me and play the guitar. And sang, he sang on a couple songs. And he and I worked via Zoom ahead of time, uh, talking through the songs and my ideas for arrangements and his thoughts. And what I loved so much is he flew from New Orleans. He arrived like the day before the session. We had one day of rehearsal and he was so prepared. He had everything worked out. It was, you know, not every musician does that, <laughs> unfortunately, but he was. And so we rehearsed one day. We went into the studio and we had uh, two and a half days to record <clears throat> all the basic tracks. There's 15 songs. It's a lot of songs. We recorded all the basic tracks, him and me on the guitar. We got his vocal tracks before he left, before he had to go. He went back to New Orleans. And then here I was. We were so excited because it sounded so good. I was just talking with Jamie last night. I saw him at a party and he, Jamie told me, he said, you know, at the end of those 12 hour recording days, Alex and I would sit and listen to the tracks again and drink bourbon because they sounded so great. And I was like, what? Because usually you're like, I don't want to hear anything more. And then I had to finish it out. And that was a daunting thing. I had to finish out the percussion, some of the bass parts some more guitar parts, all the vocals. So it took about two to three more months of me working on that in the studio. And then we completed it also in December of 2019. And that's when I put it out. And I have not put this on the streaming services. It's kind of a special item. You can only get in my shop, shop.nymphia.com. Um, my fans love it. I love it. It's a very special album because Kate Bush, is her, her music is just extraordinary. So I'm really proud of this too, because it really shows her music in a way that you don't get to experience it otherwise. So that's the story about Naked Kate. Now, can you tell me more about your um, EP, uh, Sampler? Yes, I, EP is called Curios. And I put this out after Naked Kate, before my latest album, What Have I Forgotten? I had a couple of my songs already written and recorded for What Have I Forgotten? And I, I thought, you know what? I wanna put out a sampler of the best of my albums. So the first two albums, Dream Dance and Naked Kate, I asked my fans, what songs would you like to see on this sampler? And so they selected them, which I'm, it was wonderful to hear back from them. And so the songs that are on it from the first two albums are Dream Dance and um, Over the Hedge, which is from the Dream Dance album. And then the Naked Kate songs are Cloud Busting and Experiment 4. And then there's two more songs on here that are from the latest album, What Have I Forgotten? And it's the title track and a song called Liminal. So I released this between Naked Kate and What Have I Forgotten? Because I was like, I feel like I need to get some more music out for my fans because they're waiting and it's, you know, it's a long process to make albums. And so I released this one in 2021, about two years ago. And I just did a, a promotion recently for Black Friday for this, which did really well. 
And actually, now might be a good time to say to all of you watching out there in YouTube land, those of you who are watching this broadcast, I will give you a download of this sampler, all six songs for free in a contest. And here's how the context works. All you have to do is go to music.nymphia.com. Super easy, music.nymphia.com. And Nymphia is N-Y-M-P-H-Y-A. And just put your name and email address in, and that will opt you into my email, which you will also get other goodies, other free songs and wonderful behind the scenes things. When you do this, next to your first name, put the word contest. So if it were me, I would say Valentina contest. And then my email, nymphia at nymphia.com. And that way I'll know that you are one of the people that heard it here. And then you have until New Year's Eve, right, Ruben? New Year's Eve of this year. And who from there, I'll do a random drawing of whoever opted in and you will get your free download of this. So I'm really excited about that because then you get to experience this music that so many other people are loving and emailing me about almost daily I hear from my fans about it. So I'm excited to meet you too. So say hi to me when you opt in and then we'll see who wins. And we can announce it, Ruben. I can announce it in my social media. We can Maybe you can announce it in a YouTube short or something like that, however you want to do that. Really well. Um, so can you tell me more about your latest um, album called What Have I Forgotten? Yes, I'd love to. This was an amazing project because it ended up being this huge, all-encompassing project. After Naked Kate was out, it was actually maybe, a oh, a, not very long, I started realizing, you know what, I'm feeling the call, I can feel the little itch, it's time to start writing music. So the first song I wrote was What Have I Forgotten? And it's a, it was a song really about the relic hunt of life where sometimes you realize you've left parts of yourself behind that you want to reclaim. And how do I, what are those parts? And going inward to discover what those are. Or maybe being reminded of something out in the world and you're reminded of, I forgot that I used to love to do that. Or I forgot that I used to be that way and now I'm not that way anymore. And that's a good thing. You know, just being aware of all these parts you leave behind. That was what the song was about. When I wrote the song and I worked on it in the studio, I realized going back to my dream dance days, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't face another album taking six years where I'm laying in all the parts. It's too much, it's too difficult. I need to work with a producer. And I didn't have one in mind and I didn't even know where to begin. So I, all of a sudden I felt really desolate. Like, how am I gonna make this album? I can already hear what I want it in my head and I, I can't do it myself, I need help, what am I gonna do? So I walked out into my garden, which is one of my areas, my sanctuaries, and I literally did like another, like a prayer in a way, asking the universe, can you please help me? I, I don't know what I'm going to do to make this album. A couple weeks later, I get a call to do some vocals at a session. So I go to the session and I walk in and there is Francisco Vives at the console. And the minute I walked in and I heard what he was doing, with his production i was like oh my god this is the guy and i was so happy that because it was like literally two weeks after this prayer um and so i talked with him about it you know we started collaborating that was it happened he was like yeah i'd be happy to work with you on this so that's how i started working on this album was with him and it completely altered the, my workflow so i would write here and basically lay in the timeline the basic tracks maybe just the basic chord changes on a piano or my guitar like the song pythia i just played the entire guitar part here in one take which was amazing <laughs> i didn't make any mistakes <laughs> and then i laid the scratch vocal down and then brought it to his studio and then we would start building up parts francisco is an amazing musician anyone who has heard him play live and even has heard the album and says, oh my God, he's incredible. He can play many different styles. He can play bass parts. He can also create drum parts because he used to be a drummer. So it was almost like I had this whole one man band that I could play with. And his job, he kept saying, is trying to, based on what I'm telling him or examples I'm giving him, extract from my brain what I'm hearing out into the studio. So we worked on this for about 
two and a half to three years. I would write the material and then bring it to him. I would do the main vocals here, the final vocal I recorded here, keyboard parts that I was playing recorded here, guitar parts that I was playing I recorded here, and we pieced it together that way. So as I wrote all this material, I looked at the themes of these songs and I noticed, you know, I'm very inspired by spiritual practice and I've been studying what's called the Western mysteries for a long time. So a lot of these songs have those themes. And when I ordered the CD and I was listening to it in the car and I would, oh, that order, no, I got to move that song here and move that song there. Because when you order a CD, you want it to have the drama, you want it to have a rise and a fall, you want to take people on a journey, like a set list, really. So when the final winning sequence, I sat back and I looked at it and I said, this is it, this is great, I love this, this works. Then I looked at the themes of the songs and I, then I saw, oh my God, these songs are in the order of spiritual alchemy, which is this ancient, goes back to the Egyptians, this ancient spiritual practice based on the emerald tablet. And this is where it gets very esoteric. But when I saw that it was in this order of the stages of spiritual alchemy, then I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't do it intentionally. I think it just came through. And that's when I thought I need to write a book. I need to write a book to explain this because it doesn't come across with just the songs. And so that's what I did. And that's where this came from. And that's what turned this into this all immersive project. And so this is the book that goes with the album. Also, I have it on my first vinyl. It's a double translucent blue vinyl. I'll show it to you in a moment. Uh, so when you get the album and the book, there's the back cover. Um, you basically go deep into each of the songs. Each chapter of the book starts with an illustration. I illustrated this with watercolors. And then you get the lyrics. And then you get a chapter about not only the, the, the music, like it tells you about how the music was put together, but also about what the hidden esoteric meaning is underneath each of the songs. And then at the end of the chapters, you also get a guided imagery to take you into your personal journey so you can discover this meaning for yourself. And then I decided, well, I better record some, the guided imagery that I've written in spoken word with ambient music. So then I did that. So that was like a whole other hours worth of material that you get. So it was almost like Francisco was like, you realize you made two CDs. I made the music CD and then I made the whole hours worth of guided imagery. So it's this whole 360 immersion experience and I am so proud of it. And, you know, my fans are, I'm getting stuff all the time about them, from them, about it, from the book, from the music. It's, I can't even begin to tell you what, it was life, life changing. I think each of these recordings has been life changing for me. And so now we're working on doing this live in the UK for 2024, which is also really exciting. Now, can you tell me more about um, your latest single that you released called Outside of, of Time, Don't Let This Moment Go? Yes, that song, I was in the library working on writing, I think it was the Pythia chapter in this book. And I had some music on in the background. And all of a sudden, music without words, because I can't write with music with words, like some instrumental music was playing. And all of a sudden, I just heard uh, don't let this moment go. And I heard a melody and I was like, oh my God, a song is coming through. So I, I leapt up from my computer that I was writing on and ran in here and went to the keyboard and just started playing the chord changes and the melody. I And those I just started hearing right away, just the melody, the chord changes and that one line, don't let this moment go. And so I wrote the whole song in about, you know, eight minutes or something like that. And then uh, I settled in to write the lyrics and I realized that I wanted to write a song for my fans because the gratitude that I have, literally how they've changed my life. From that first moment where I was like, I'm not gonna put this out, I'm too full of anxiety. I put it out, I trusted. And then I got you know all these people that love the music and how it's affected their lives. Um, some people, I've got someone who said it even has saved their life from depression and things like that. And be, 
how much they have changed my life is huge. So I wanted to write a song about that and make it a song of gratitude to them. And so that's where that's where it came from. And you know, it's basically about these moments that you're sharing, like your time with me right now. You're taking time out of your life and your day to spend time with me to talk about my music. That's a precious thing, and I'm really grateful for that. When they choose to listen to my music compared to all the other music that's out there, it's like our souls are connecting in that moment, and I'm really grateful for that. So that's what the song is about: is, is these moments. Anytime you're connecting with somebody, a lover, a friend, a family mate, a workmate, and you're having this, you know, you're sharing. That's a special thing. That's don't let this moment go. It's outside of time because it lives in its own place. So that's what the song is about. It's the last song on the album, and it kind of, it, it really is a consummation of all the journey that the album takes you on as well. Can you tell me more about you、um, coming to the UK、uh, next year? So can you tell me more about what, what date you got coming up? Yeah, I, well, I'm going to be there in August doing another performance that's not related to Nymphia, and then after that, I'm going to be spending a few months. Working with another artist named Rose Thorn, definitely check out her music. Beautiful singer songwriter, and we will be performing my show, which is a combination of her music and mine. But it's called Magical Music from the Dreamery Outside of Time, and it's a it's not just a band playing at a pub. We're creating a whole show. I did a first iteration of it at a festival recently here in October. The heck. The festival is called Hexen Fest, and I did a Nymphia show where I tell stories and parables and weave、uh, the themes of some of the transformational stuff in and amongst the music, and also took people on a guided path, working a guided inner journey in that show. So this will be a larger version of that, where we are telling stories and weaving the themes of our music together、uh, with parable and poetry and some guided imagery and. So we will be doing them at art centers. It's with a full band, and we'll be rehearsing in August. I'm also thinking to come over next early in spring next year to start the rehearsal process. Rose Thorn and I are right now、uh, writing the show together, and we've already created the through lines. We've already created some of the storytelling, and we are right now actively looking at art centers. We already booked one in Litchfield called the Litchfield Guild Hall. And it's a beautiful medieval building, which is we're we're all very excited about, and it's going to be in collaboration with Litchfield Arts, and we're working with a team, a promotional team there. So we're thinking, you know, probably do maybe five dates, and very special.、Uh, you you asked me before we went on the air about merch, and we will be selling, you know, all of this merch there, plus probably a tour T-shirt. And one of the things we're thinking about is doing a very special presentation, maybe at an art gallery or a very intimate place, where the ticket price includes the book and the CD or the vinyl, and also a reception with wine and some food. And it would be a higher priced ticket, but a very special evening. So we might put something like that together,、uh, and al- along with the art centers pr- performances. So it's a it's a very big project. We're very excited about it. Um, and we don't have, you know, it's it's all formulating, so I can't give you specific dates and locations quite yet.、Um, f- finally,、um, can you tell me how's being an independent artist for you? You know, it's it's a mix of things. I think for all of us, and one of the things that's the most difficult is we are the CEO and the the janitor <laughs> and everything in between. So. A lot of it comes falls on our shoulders, and there's only so much of me to go around. So, one of the things I'm looking for are some、uh, pe- admins and people to start helping with some of the things that someone else can do. That it, and you know, like I'm the only one that can make the music, but there are other things that other people can do that I don't have to be the one to do that. So that's one of the things I'm looking at because I really do need help. It's it's a lot of work, you know, to do everything, all the social media and all the promotion and. All of that. That's the downside of it. The upside of it is, I get to create whatever I want to create. I also get to target the my music marketing the way that I want to target the music marketing. 
What's hard about it is I, you know, you don't have a lot of help. The, the large labels are still operating in the old school way of, of marketing where they just throw things out there and don't do a lot of targeted marketing. Like let's put a poster on a bus and hope that people who see it will like the music. Um, you know, nowadays because of the internet, we can reach people really more uh, specifically. And I think the, large, the labels are starting to learn more about that now. I would not uh, balk at the idea of being on a label, depending on the type of agreement that we would have, because what they can do is they can provide you with um, introductions to the right kind of people. So it's definitely a mixed bag. But the thing I love the most is my artistic integrity and I can make the kind of music that I want to make. And finally, uh, can you tell our listeners where can I find you on social media? Yes, well, below this this video will be a lot of links that um, that you can access my shop, my Facebook page, my Instagram page, my YouTube, my Twitter. So my main website is nymphia.com. And by the way, nymphia comes from the Greek nature spirits, the nymph. So it's all about, uh, you know, being a natural being that exalts in the natural world and the magic and beauty of the natural world. So it's N-Y-M-P-H-Y-A, Nymphia, nymphia.com. I'm on Facebook, very active there. I have a beautiful community on Facebook where I post a lot of things that are just inspiring, not necessarily just about my music, just beautiful picture and imagery to help bring people to a special place. It's kind of like I want to just create a little corner in the internet where you can go for magic and music and beauty and and spirituality and things that inspire you. So that's facebook.com slash Nymphia. I also have a group on Facebook called Nymphia's Realm of Creativity, Inspiration and Enchantment, where the users also post their own things that inspire us. Instagram, Nymphia Music on Instagram, YouTube, youtube.com slash Nymphia, TikTok is Nymphia, uh, Twitter, Nymphia Music, my shop, shop.nymphia.com, Spotify, Nymphia, the link is below. All these links are below. So I would love to see you and be sure you enter the contest. Go to music.nymphia.com, put your name, contest, and then your email, and then you will be entered and you'll still get some cool other things too. Now, thank you, let me check to you today. Ruben, thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a beautiful holiday season and a beautiful rest of your evening. And thank you for doing this for independent artists. It's been a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>